Hi everyone, we are group 5 and we've made the air hockey application. I will show you how our game actually runs. So as soon as you start the application, we will have a main menu which will take the input for each player's name and the color for each player. Something to note here is anytime you um, enter an invalid player name or a color name, the box around will glow in red and it will ask you to enter a valid um, color name or the player's name and there will be a text underneath that will tell you for in order for a player's name to be valid it has to be between 1 to 10 characters and any basic colors will work for our game but any complicated colors will not work so like you guys can see from the screen that we entered an invalid color name and therefore the box around glowed red and if the box around glows green, we know we have um, entered valid input. So then we just have to go back and correct the invalid input and we can just hit play when we're ready. And then when we, play, uh, when we click the button where it says controls, it will show you or there will be a message that will say that use the arrow keys for player one, which will be at the top of the screen. And then use the um, keys WASD for player 2 who will be at the bottom of the screen. And our game is, as you guys can see, it's a vertically displayed game. And this game will be over when one player reaches 7 points. So once you're ready, once you've inputted the valid player's name and the color, um, you can just hit play and the game will begin. And here you guys can see um, that our... Petals move independently, our puck is automatically colored red, and you guys can see from the display that we have a um, glow effect around the pucks, the petal, and the boundaries of the game, and this effect is called the drop shadow effect. And as you guys can see, anytime any player scores, it will be displayed at the center of the screen every time you know this player scored and the upcoming points of that player. And this will update every time somebody scores um, until any player reaches 7 points and that's when the game will be over. So we'll just kind of run and see how the game actually won. So this is just basically um, showing you how the scores will be displayed every time any player um, scores. And you can see the points are getting updated each time as well. And you can also see that our um, petals are also moving very independently. And there's also a glow effect around it as well. And then yes, for if you want to pause or unpause the game, you can just press the button P to pause and unpause the game. As you guys can see from the screen, that you guys can pause and unpause the game using that functionality. And yeah, there you go. So if any player reaches seven points, you know there will be a message that will say game over and this player won the game. And um, it will then ask you if you want to play a new game. And if you hit the button and you say yes, you want to play a new game, it will redirect you back to the main menu screen and it will go through the same thing and you will have to enter a valid name and the valid color name. And without it, it will not let you play. And even if you enter play without um, entering any input, it will still glow in red and it will also ask you to go back and put a valid color name and player name. And the exact same thing repeats itself. So that's basically how our game runs and looks when we run it. So this video just gives a, a brief explanation of our, our uh, class diagram and how each class relates to the others and how they interact with each other. Um, it's a bit blurry, so yeah. Um, so we'll start with main, which this is a, a JavaFX application. So main is an extension of application, and so the initial state of the game is set to menu. So after the stage is set up here, it will create uh, a new pane uh, menu and add it to the, the, the scene. And menu is just an extension of pane. Um, and so within menu, we'll create the buttons and also the, you know, the text boxes and whatever else uh, that that's displayed when the menu opens. And 
Once we receive valid, valid input from the user in the text boxes, it'll be stored in these variables right here. So player one name, player one color, and then player two name as well as player two color. So going back to main, um, that info uh, from the menu will be used to create a new table, which is just basically an instance of the game. So within uh, when we create a new table, we'll create two players and a puck. And the players will be created based off of uh, the input provided by the user. So based off of the uh, player one name, player two name, and then the player one color and player two color, we'll create two paddles for each player, one for each player. And then we'll also create a puck. And puck and player are both uh, ex an extension of the circle class from JavaFX. And that just basically allows us to update things both within uh, the, each instance of the class and also on the stage itself, or on the scene itself, more easily. So, for example, um, when we change the x and y values of the puck or player, um, we can also, within set x and set y, we can call sen set center x and set center y, which will update the uh, location on the actual uh, scene. And, and yeah, uh, here we have the Drop Shadow class, which is a JavaFX class that basically uses, um, well, we can use it to set certain effects to objects. So uh, we basically used it to set glow effects to the player paddles and the puck and also certain parts of like the, the background. So like the player goals, the borders, and also the you know, center circles and whatnot. And then that, yeah, we also have uh, a basic just J unit test for the puck class here. Um, and that brings us to our last class, which is the controller class. So within the main class, we have these variables here. We have up, down, left, right, and then W, A, S, and D, which are Boolean uh, variables. So whenever um, a player hits a key, uh, if whenever, so player one will be the arrow keys and player two will be W, A, S, and D. And whenever a key is hit, it'll, uh, it'll change the value pertaining to that, uh, its variable to true. And whenever it's released, it'll change it to false. And basically that just allows the player to move in two directions at once, making the movements just a lot smoother. And yeah, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the game. And once the game is over, it'll change the game state to over, and it'll basically load a new menu asking, or sorry, first it'll load, it'll just put a button on the screen that asks if the player wants to play again. And if they press it, then it'll restart the process and create a new menu. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for our class diagram. So. Uh, thanks for, for listening. Yeah. So the controller class handles input from the keyboard to move the player's paddles. It increases acceleration in the direction of a key press for both controllers. This one using the arrow keys and this one using WASD. Uh, the set controls uh, associates a key pressed with a boolean for movement in that direction and stops increasing acceleration in that direction if the key is released. So this is when it's pressed and this is when it's released. The player class extends circle to easily build the shape of the paddle and it's initially set to zero movement and it has an initial, an initial starting position. player class extends circle to easily build the shape of the paddle. It's got an initial starting position and its velocity is set to zero. The constructor takes a name and which is input from the menu class and it builds a new paddle or a player from that. There's getters and setters to stop privacy leaks and access player attributes from other classes.
and to set up effects on the player's p paddle dependent on their color choice. So that's the border glow down here. Putt class also extends circle to build the shape easily. Variables are instantiated as final as they don't need to change throughout the game. The constructor builds the puck and sets its physics values um, and applies visual effects. Privacy leaks are contained with the constructor used by getters and setters. The main function calls on these to update the position of the puck with the timer. The keep puck in function um, checks to see whether or not the edges of the puck are within the confines of the rink and adjusts the direction of travel if the puck has hit the wall. And the update puck position sets the position of the puck based on the puck's previous position and the direction in which it's going. The table constructor builds a game table from the players and the puck. Uh, the size of the table is instantiated as final as it doesn't change. There's uh, gears for the puck, the puck and the players so they can be accessed from other classes. The keep paddles in is similar to the keep puck in, which it checks to make sure that the paddles are within the confines of the rink and adjusts their direction of travel if they've made a collision with the walls. The check for goal function checks where whether the puck is and if it is hit the goal, the center of the puck has hit the goal then it uh, changes the boolean of a goal to true. The reset methods here are called after a goal is scored, right there, and it brings everything back to their initial positions. The apply friction function uh, just slows everything down over time uh, so the physics acts similar to a real air hockey board. The update paddles positions function sets the position of the paddle based on their previous position and the direction that they're going. Um, the game over is a boolean to determine whether a player has reached seven points and to trigger the end game message. The distance method determines the distance between the paddles and the pucks. And the rotate method is a helper method for the paddle collision. And it determines uh, angles between uh, the two round objects. The paddle collision checks the distance between the puck and the paddle. And if it's less than the sum of the radii, then they've made a collision and it uses the rotate method to determine which direction that the puck will be sent after a collision with one of the paddles. So now we're in the GUI package. Uh, the game screen class extends pane to build uh, the GUI components. There's a few variables that are instantiated here because they're used by both the menu and the rink. Um, the drop shadow methods are used by both so that's, that method is here. Um, there's getters and setters for the green border glow because that's used in the main class as well. Uh, there's an abstract method set screen here which is just a reminder to set the screen method in both the menu and the rink.
So in the menu class, the constructor just sets up uh, basic screen options, the run menu method, uh, builds the pane, and sets up uh, all the components in it. The set screen is where all the components themselves are built. So the play button, the controls button, uh, info is a text field that shows up, play requirements is another text field that shows up, and they're all set up with their fonts, the positions, the colors, and the text that's actually in them. The set buttons method um, is an event handler for when a button is clicked so both for the controls and the play. The display controls uh, handles what happens after the controls button is hit. It just shows um, a box where a text field shows up that explains how to play the game. Display controls adds text to the pane when the user clicks the controls button to learn about the game. The play button checks if the user input is valid and changes the boolean menu finished so that the game can begin. Uh, input is valid is a helper for play and it just sets up uh, visual elements so that the user can know if they've input something that's invalid into the, the text fields. And there's getters and setters down here um, so that they can be accessed from other classes. The rink class extends the game screen class. Um, all the variables are instantiated here as private. Um, there's another simple constructor here similar to the main constructor. The run rink method is very similar to the run menu method. It uh, sets up the pane with everything that needs to be included uh, when you're looking at the, the hockey rink itself. The set screen is where all of the elements of the rink are actually put together. Um, there's a, all the boards, the center circle, and the center line. They're all set up with their colors, the border glow, and the sizes and actual positions of the rectangles and circles. So the main class here in the application package. It extends the class application. There's uh, instantiation of all our variables here. Uh, we use the state system of determining how the program is functioning, whether that be menu, game, or game over. Uh, it begins off in the state menu. Uh, the stage is set and uh, table and ladles are created from the user input helped by the other classes. A uh, timeline is built which will act as a timer for updating positions of elements as they move. When play is pressed the menu is finished and the game is in a state of game. Uh, this checks if the game is in a state of game and if it is uh, we're gonna make sure that the score is not shown if it's paused we're gonna bring up the pause label the controllers here are called so that uh, that part is actually working when you start playing the game. Uh, this checks if it's in a game over state, changes the state to over, and 
it'll check uh, if a player has reached the score that you need to win, which is seven, and it'll display a message that they have won along with uh, both player scores. Uh, the pause transi transition shows this message for five seconds. Um, this checks if there has been a goal and it'll display the score of both players and again shows that for two seconds with the pawns transition. So we've gone through all of this and we're now out of the states loop. So we've got our rank and we're going to add all the elements that we need to our rank. Uh, we're going to create a new menu and we're going to run that menu and if we're in a state of menu we're going to show the menu screen that we have and the stage is not resizable the create table method builds a new table from the puck and player classes based on input from the menu the update game updates values of the table as the timeline passes and it lets us know if a goal has occurred. The create label sets up visual elements of when the player scored and the game over messages uh, to sizes, positions, colors, and effects for all necessary elements. display score method adds the scores to the rank panel after a goal and then the remove score method uh, removes that from the visual. Git font is move, used by multiple classes and returns uh, one of our commonly used font and the play again shows the play again button and it handles the click of the button and that just exits the program so the user can open it up again and play another game if they want.